Hi, viewers. Another episode of Guest with Nazir. We are honored. Today's honorable guest is a doctor, but he has so many skills. We will share his skills, his experience with you, one and only Dr. Ashraf Shwan. Dr. Shwan, welcome in our show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nazir, sir. Thank you very much for joining today. Please tell our viewers about your childhood and your early days. My early days were in Pakistan, a place called Gujranwala. Uh, that's where I had my initial education and then the rest of the education and professional education was in Lahore. Uh, subsequently, I worked for a couple of years before coming to the UK. So you have completed your early education there. So how you will say that uh, your experience working as a doctor in, in Pakistan and here, so do you find any difference about the books or a syllabus or it has a similar books? Books are similar. Uh, they're all in English and all written and whatever the books are being read here in this country. Uh, very famous uh, books, Grey's and Not Me and all the books are the same. Uh, the difference is obviously that uh, we educate ourselves in Pakistan and the hospital training is slightly different. Here we have more facilities. Uh, we have uh, less doctors training together. Therefore, you have more opportunity to learn, to train yourself, to operate. Uh, therefore, uh, I believe that uh, you get a better opportunity to train yourself in this country. Uh, however, people do a lot of effort and they train themselves in Pakistan as well. Uh, many doctors now do not go abroad. They educate themselves and train themselves in Pakistan. And then they practice. Obviously, there is little difference between the medical treatment people are having in Pakistan and in the UK. So please tell our viewers about your uh, medical school's name in Pakistan, where you completed your MBBS. The medical school I uh, uh, qualified from was initially called Lahore Medical College, but then subsequently the name was changed after a, the name of a famous poet there. His name was Alama Iqbal, and uh, this college is called Alama Iqbal Medical College. And after that, you have to complete a house job. So you completed house job uh, within Lahore, or you have to travel to other city of Pakistan? No, I was fortunate to complete my house job within the same uh, medical college and, hosp uh, and uh, uh, hospital, which was attached to the medical college. So I was uh, able to complete my house job uh, at the same place. At what stage you decided that you're going to move to Great Britain? Uh, <laughs> many years ago, uh, the situation was that I was uh, relatively a political and uh, a little activist during my medical studies and uh, afterward. In the, I did not find the system over there very fair for further education. And uh, the opportunities, A, the opportunities were limited and B, the selection process wasn't that fair. And I, uh, being a little uh, vocal, uh, I tried, but I didn't want to be part of that. So I decided to train myself from England. Uh, it was also the trend, which is less now, that, you, th that most of the doctors would train in England. And if you go back after being trained in England, your practice was better, the trust in you of the public was better, and of course the quality of your training was better. So initially I came just to go back after a couple of years. So you have practice in both countries. So what is the difference of the practice, if you have mentioned that the quality of the practice and the training. So what difference you have observed during these two practices, because you are fortunate, you have practiced in both countries and you've been trained in both countries. Uh, the difference is that uh, here in this country, we are very regulated. We uh, follow a, a system when we practice. Uh, there is a limit of what you, how you can interact with the patients. There are regulations how you behave with the patient and there is also accountability how you're going to treat the patient. If you uh, have treated wrongly, you are accountable and the, you, you can have claim against you about negligence. So there is a balance. Whatever you do, it has to be perfect. It has to be uh, good and recommended. You cannot just go and do whatever. Uh, as we have reports that people operate for money and people do all sort of things. This is not possible in this country. In, in Britain, it's very regulated medical practice. GMC is very strong 
and uh, you have to follow the rules. So it means the professional conduct and the regulation is, is very strong here. Obviously, yes, yeah, yeah. So a lot of colleges been opened in Pakistan recently. Uh, we are called them private medical colleges. But in your time, there was a very, uh, a little number, but they were very um, strict about the merit and especially the selection of the students. But nowadays you can pay, is like a pay as you go. So what difference has caused this to, to the standard and the quality of education? There were only five medical colleges in Punjab in those days. King Edward Medical College was opened in the 80s. Fatma Jinnah Medical College, FJ was uh, called Gangaram Hospital. Uh, that was also opened just after partition. And then in the 50s, there was the Nishta Medical College. Uh, then uh, Bhutto opened three medical colleges together. And there was a lot of criticism about it that they were opened overnight. And the standards were not that good. But then subsequently, gradually, they picked up. And there was a minimum standard for a medical college. I never thought that you could have a private medical college in Pakistan. I, I, I was shocked when I, was, I knew that there were medical colleges left, right, and center. Uh, I do not believe they still have a standard. Uh, and then on top of that, apparently, uh, there is no uh, regulatory authority anymore like we have GMC. Uh, I don't know how you can, uh, you can run a medical system without uh, PMDC, which apparently uh, had uh, people appointed uh, through different ways. And uh, then, uh, then the selection process wasn't very fair. Uh, but uh, uh, somehow things have moved on. Now there are a lot of medical colleges, and I do not believe they have a good standard, or at least they do not have a uniform standard. But Mr. Chuan, these are regulated by the uh, health ministry and at the same time, uh, they are also uh, given the permission by the higher education authority. So it means some kind of recognition is there, but uh, it means you want a stronger institution which should regulate these colleges. Am I right? Uh, I, to be honest, still believe that Pakistan, country like Pakistan, should not have private medical colleges. Government should make more medical colleges. It needs a lot of investment and standards. And uh, Pakistan, although poor country, but it's not that poor that cannot produce more doctors. Uh, uh, the, the, it's not that costly like here, uh, that the, the med uh, cost of running a medical college by any government is very high. But uh, anyways, private sector has come forward. Uh, it is government duty that they should maintain the minimum standards of the medical colleges. There are different news. They were taking money. Money was taken in dollars, and there was no merit system. Uh, apparently, now we hear that there is a medical, there is a merit system, and the fees are being regulated as well. Uh, but I think it's a long journey for any con any any government to follow to reach to the level where the medical colleges should be. To be honest, because end of the day, doctors have to deal with the lives. But I think the, the fairness of the comparison will be that here we have a very, very long history of institution, whether it's our medical colleges or hospitals or universities. But at the same time, the age of the country is only 70 years or 70 years plus. So I think we are in the, that process, our evolution. No, we can give a lot of uh, relief, like uh, uh, flexibility, say, to Pakistan for many things, but uh, if your things are deteriorating rather than improving, if your 70s was better than 90s and 90s was better than 2000, then obviously something is not right. There is an evolution process as well. We are not asking that you have a NHS type of system over there, or you have uh, uh, you know top class housing for everyone, or uh, uh, people who do not work, they should be getting money. Everybody should get, be getting free treatment. We are not asking that. We are only asking that if you have medical colleges, they are of minimum standards which qualify so that the, the product you produce is internationally uh, acceptable and it's of some standard. So uh, uh, I think it's not that, you know, it, it doesn't cost as much as we think. So government can do it. So, Mr. Chuan, you practice here as a doctor. At the same time, you, you're doing business. 
So what, what area of the medicines you have chosen for your specialization? I chose orthopedics. I liked orthopedics always because uh, the results were, uh, results are in front of you. You don't have to think too much. If the bone is broken, you fix it. You can see on the x-ray that you are fixed properly. And uh, six weeks later, you see the same man running and walking. And uh, so I, I really liked. And I worked very hard when I came in this country. Uh, I, was, I had an NHS appointment and I was doing uh, private work and I was working over like at night I was going to another hospital. 10 years I worked for 30 years. I worked equal to three doctors which was actually calculated uh, on uh, for some reason which, which is on the standard. But uh, then I after working uh, very hard for 10 years I decided to do more business than uh, NHS. I kept my private practice, which I reduced. And then slowly I stopped operating as well. And then I got involved in politics where you need more time. And for five years, I was traveling to Pakistan for uh, when I was MPA there. So um, I still work. I still uh, do reasonable amount of work. Probably I still work as much as any doctor can work. But I do a lot of other things as well. We'll go towards your political career, but uh, in the beginning, we want to focus on medicine. So please tell our viewers about your uh, business and other interests. Uh, I Soon I came here, I went into healthcare uh, business and I set up uh, nursing homes, which I still do. Uh, I also had uh, a property development portfolio, which is still uh, ongoing, mashallah. Uh, I also have uh, uh, two companies which, uh, in, which involve doctors for medical reporting nationally. Uh, uh, and uh, then, you know, some other restaurant and other, other interests as well. <laughs> so how you find that business and the profession? Because obviously, uh, so you have got the experience in the medicine but at the same time in the business so how this idea came in your mind that you can do these two things together well initially i when i came i i started working and i met the right people there were some people from india they were setting up the healthcare system uh, soon i came and i got interested into it as well as i thought if they can do it i could do it as well in the then i felt that as a doctor you you know, as a doctor, you have a lot of, uh, lot of, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, benefits. Like uh, the patient you 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 see every day, they come from different background, and if you want, if you need a plumber, there will be one at least in your clinic. If you need anybody from any special, I was choosing a lot of people from my patients for my <laughs> for my business. So, so it's like being, a social uh, network, also I will say, from rather than you know, so it is a social networking type of thing. So you get a lot of feedback from the different people and also obviously it's a part of education yeah i uh, yeah it's a good exposure with people and you look after people people want to reward you and that they if you're a doctor they treat you differently which is very really good and in this country especially there is a there is a respect for medical profession so, so recently nhs is uh, uh, you know fighting with a pandemic which is covid-19 so and there is also news in the media that uh, Britain is going to face second phase of this pandemic. So what is your say on it and how we can, uh, you know, make our community safe and also other world safe? So what is your message on that? For the last two weeks, the daily reports are showing that there are more uh, people uh, who are uh, getting infected and the death. Uh, the number of deaths has increased as well. There is a serious concern that there might be a second wave. Uh, but the government is prepared, and I believe that uh, uh, perhaps it, we are not ready to open everything yet. Uh, it's a good decision to go back to rule of six, that more than six people can't be together. And uh, we still continue uh, using the masks, and uh, we keeping keeping the distance and uh, using the sanitizers. So perhaps uh, the, this is going to continue for a little longer. Uh, I'm sure uh, 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 that people are following it already. 
And with these precautions, uh, the second wave may not have that much problem. Uh, uh, but yes, it is a concern. And my message towards our own community is that the record has shown that, there, that our people have been infected more. So please be careful. Joint families particularly, uh, make sure that you don't visit and have too many visits. If too many people live in one house, if one gets infected, please isolate them and uh, do not uh, go near and uh, protect yourself. Isolation is very important. Most of the things we all know already, but it's a message that there is a second wave and everybody should stay safe. Mr. John, you have also taken uh, a keen interest in Pakistani politics. So please tell our viewers about that journey and where you end up in that interesting, I will say it's an interesting experience. It was very interesting experience because I went to Pakistan with full passion and wanted to deliver. And uh, I never knew that there was any, and there was no, there was no government uh, announcement or anything on selection process that you, if you're a dual national, you, you could not contest the elections. I only had a British passport, which I gave to the judge who shortlisted or probably, you know, who went through the paperwork. And he was very happy to see my British passport. He looked at on the front, at the back, and all the stamps I had for the countries I traveled. And I did that twice in 2002 and 2008, seven. And uh, nobody objected on my being a, a candidate. And uh, I won the election. I attended assembly for four and a half years. And suddenly, uh, they, the, the courts uh, became uh, active and they wanted to remove the people from the assemblies who had dual nationality, which I believe that, that that was a case that they wanted to eliminate one or two people. And uh, I, I was just caught in the crossfire. So that was a crossfire. But presently, the present government is trying to bring uh, amendment in the law that uh, dual nationals will be allowed to participate in politics. So do you think you will try your luck again or you have enough? And is it, Mr. Nazir, dilemma is that all the laws are in Pakistan, but the enforcement is selective. This is like you have all the weapons, but you fire when you want to. You have all the laws, everything is there. Now, a lot of people are uh, dual national and uh, the courts are not bothered. Uh, and you know the way when when you leave live in another country, you do your work and business. You got a family there, and you move and you go to another country, and you start politics there. You start living there. You it, it is a massive thing you do, and I did that, and it ended in in a sudden one night uh, decision. And also when I was there, I could not do anything. I could not deliver anything. So yes. It's, it's, and I'm not interested to go back and uh, do that all over again, just purely because of the unpredictability about the things. Uh, okay, if you do not allow the dual national, perfectly fine. Please announce it and do it for everyone. Just this is the law. So then just it should not be selected. It should be uh, selective. It should be for everybody. You, you kicked us out a few years ago and now you've got all dual nationals all over the place and cricket and everywhere. So, uh, you know, should we trust this type of government or this type of country? You know, you make laws, make the laws for everyone. These laws, laws are laws and laws should be enforced and they should apply to everyone all the time. Uh, it, it was good that you should have declined my application there and then when I went there. Perfectly fine. It was my choice to, to, to surrender my British passport or to continue. But... Uh, it, it, it is not right. You've got to, to follow the rules and laws all the time. Please tell our viewers about your present interest politics in Great Britain and your affiliation with the, with the party politics. No, I was always interested in politics and I was always interested in British politics. And I was uh, a candidate in 2007 uh, chosen by Conservative Party when I had an opportunity to go to Pakistan. So I'm back in Conservative Party, and I'm serving as chairman of Conservative Friends of uh, NHS. I'm trying to build uh, bridges between NHS staff and Conservative Party. And I'm also director of uh, Conservative Friends of Pakistan. And uh, I am also ambassador for Leaders Group of Conservative Party. Uh, 
so I've got a bit of involvement in Conservative Party and I'm very proud and I as well seek support of Pakistani diaspora so that we make our impact in British politics so that we get what we want. We get respect, we want acknowledgement, we have our own representation in every level. We can only do it if we are involved. So you are involved in also community cohesion and friendship between Pakistani community and Indian community. Please tell our viewers about your interaction with both community and your experience. In this country, when we came, there was a lot of friction between Pakistani and Indian community. They would not sit together on Diwali, Eid or any festivities. There was the, there were like processions in the areas and sometimes police was involved as well. Uh, we came up with an idea. I have a friend. Uh, he is now a member of House of Lords, Mr. Ramir Ranger. He uh, is Indian uh, and uh, I was from Pakistani side. We started this campaign that at least in Britain we should be together because our food, businesses, hotel, restaurant, language, all the tastes are similar and people would benefit from uh, being together. Yes, there are differences uh, in, uh, over, over in, in Asia, but here when we're living, our children, we have more opportunities, possibilities if we work together. We can uh, help each other's business, we can help each other's problems, we have more or less uh, same funds and same problems so we could share and that kicked off very well we uh, brought the communities together there are no more uh, 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 such processions anymore people enjoy the, the, the festivities of uh, both communities people are together and if there is any issue we have people on both sides we can meet and we can sit and we can talk uh, i have uh, ambition with rami ranger to bring that peace together in Pakistan as well. We believe that future is in peace. When in peace, you don't lose anything. And India also needs friendship with Pakistan as much as Pakistan needs with India. Uh, as long as the issues are resolved fairly and squarely and up to the satisfaction of the both parties, uh, we are not taking any sides. We do not say who is right, who is wrong. We only say that please, you are the bosses, you are the people, you are in charge, but please talk about peace. Bring people together, spend less money on weapons, spend more money on education and health on both sides. Bring that part of the world up and you have manpower, you can give talent to people, you can give doctors to people, you can give uh, IT experts, engineers, you got force. The people live in India and Pakistan together are a good quarter of the whole world. We can use that force for positive things, but we can only do it if there is no war, if there is peace there. And, but a lot and of obviously, analysts say that the the main issue is between India and Pakistan is Kashmir. If that issue is on the table, then it's very difficult unless it is resolved. The peace is very difficult and impossible. You're saying it in a few words, please, because of the time restraints. I think the only I think the only issue between Pakistan and India is Kashmir. There is no other issue, I think. Uh, there is water issue that was signed back, but that can be redressed. If there are other issues, which can they, those can be redressed if this Kashmir uh, conflict is resolved. It is complex. It is uh, quite long. Uh, it, is, it has uh, been, uh, uh, it has resulted in more Do than Do you think the Britain can play a vital role in, in it? In a lot of... I spoke to the, the foreign secretary recently because there was talk about peace in, uh, in the Middle East, which Israel is now uh, having friendship with few uh, countries. And uh, there are rumors that few more may follow. And uh, he agreed that if there is any um, more, like initiative at any level, uh, Britain will be able to, but, uh, Perhaps end of the day, it is it is the, it is the it is the problem of the two nations together. Both are now. It's not those days like hundred years ago. Very wise leadership on both sides. Educated leadership. Communication is far better. Uh, you can talk. You can see each other. You see the statements on a daily basis. Uh, you can if you give a soft statement for one side just on the TV. Uh, you expect a soft statement from the other side. So. Uh, there can be a, a, a local initiative and then word can join as well. Uh, 
that that i i believe that peace is the only way forward and that should happen sooner than later dr shwan uh, peace is the only solution but on the same note uh, what is your other activity especially in charitable interest you are doing some um, charity project in pakistan please tell our viewers i'm chairman of a charity called human care trust which is british this is, which is registered in the charity commission in the uk from 2000 it has got record of and accounts of every year uh, which can be seen online i have not taken anybody's money at all i only uh, gave a percentage of my earning and that all is invested in pakistan we did uh, work in the earthquakes in kashmir and now we are setting up a free hospital in gujrawala and uh, we will uh, i'll continue and i'll make sure that my next generation also keeps it going i believe that share of your uh, money should go to the poor people and that uh, is that should continue dr chon we appreciate your efforts uh, with this message and this note uh, keep up the good work viewers this was guest nazir keep watching shafi live tv and thank you for watching and uh, at the end thank you very much dr chon thank you nazir sir thank you very much thank you for joining thank you